and good morning, everyone. And thanks for attending our webinar. Uh, we're just gonna hold for just one minute uh, to allow some other folks who should be attending to attend, and then we'll we'll get get going right away. So thank you very much for attending. All right, good morning, everybody. And thank you very much for attending our webinar today. Uh, Ever Ready with Cloud Endure. This is an, this is an event uh, with Particular Presence Technologies and AWS uh, partner and AWS that will talk about the benefits of the AWS Cloud Endure product. My name is Delton Phillips and I am a director of Particular Presence Technologies and I'll be your host today in this event. Before we actually begin, I'd just like to tell you a bit about uh, our company. Uh, Particular Presence is a technology where we build, integrate, maintain and innovate. And we do many, much of this on AWS providing solutions for customers in the cloud. We started in 2014 as a software development company. And over time, ha we have developed significant capabilities in AWS and actually became the first AWS partner in Jamaica and the Caribbean. All our team members are certified professionals. Uh, local experts to work with you here in Jamaica. And we have many relationships in the insurance, banking, and financing industry. We also have the designation of being a Lambda, AWS Lambda service delivery partner, which qualifies us to deliver services using serverless technologies on AWS. Significant to note, uh, we do quite a bit of modernization projects, so moving old infrastructure or older applications into the cloud, and we engage in software development partnerships uh, with companies who we work with. And today for our presentation, uh, we're gonna have a presenter from Amazon Web Services. He's a regional solutions architect, Tamrat Yosef. And he's an expert in disaster recovery and in AWS technologies in general. And today he'll be taking us through the presentation on AWS Cloud Endure. So at this point, I'd like to just hand over to Tamrat. And welcome Tamrat to Jamaica. Thank you. Thank you, Delton. And thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Delton, and the whole uh, Particular Presence team for having me here with you today. And uh, hopefully one day, very soon, we'll be able to all meet in person down in Jamaica. Uh, so as Delta was saying, I'm, uh, my name is Tamrat Yosef. I said, I'm a solutions architect here at AWS. I've uh, been here for uh, about a year and a half now, uh, almost uh, that long. Uh, I'm based out of uh, South Florida and Miami, uh, covering the Caribbean uh, region and other parts of uh, here in the, in the Americas. Um, as my role is really to help uh, uh, you know customers uh, of ours uh, and partners like uh, particular presence again uh, congratulations on 
all that you've been able to achieve and for all that you continue to achieve uh, within your uh, certification and uh, your journey within AWS. Um, so the, the session today uh, really is focused on uh, disaster recovery, uh, uh, particularly uh, looking at um, leveraging the cloud endure solution that we have within AWS to achieve that. Uh, and this is again, um, usually around uh, hurricane season that we all share in this part of the world. Uh, this is uh, even more critical um, in that in people's mind than, than other times of the year maybe. Uh, so we'll, we'll go that uh, we'll go there and cover that. Uh, but actually I just dealt in quickly. Uh, I'm not able to share my screen right now. It says uh, host disabled participant screen sharing. Uh, if you can please just uh, enable that for me. No problem, one second. And, and while we wait, I'll just quick, all right, perfect. So I think I should be able to do that. Yeah, perfect, thank you. Um, so the session, uh, as I share my screen here, is gonna be split into two sections, uh, generally speaking. Uh, the first part is gonna be, you know, just a few slides just to put some uh, you know, talk about the service, but um, you know, give uh, some perspective and how how we we've designed the solution and how you can leverage it. And the second part is going to be an actual demo of of the solution that uh, that again showcases the simplicity and the but yet the power of uh, cloud and disaster recovery. Okay, all right. <clears throat> so let's get into it um, again just want to make sure that uh, it, this stays interactive. I may not see the chat window uh, while I'm, I'm presenting, but if you have questions, please drop them there. Uh, if you want to unmute yourself and ask questions, interrupt me, uh, more than happy to answer your questions on, 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 on anything. In terms of agenda, uh, this is what we have planned. Again, at the end, we're going to have a, a demo uh, and a Q&A, uh, but um, again, at any time, please interrupt me in, in terms of uh, if you have any questions. But really what we want to talk about is just Cloud Endure, AWS Cloud Endure, which is a, a service that runs in the background uh, to keep your applications up to date on AWS so that in the event of a disaster, you can recover your entire environment within minutes with your applications running natively on AWS, right? So uh, by doing so, you're leveraging the scalability of AWS and uh, Cloud Endure significant, can significantly reduce your disaster recovery TCO, and we'll be able to see that um, during this presentation and the demo as well, okay? So let's first contrast DR between traditional DR that you uh, uh, probably do now uh, within your on-premise or uh, uh, colocation environment, and when it is done in the cloud. Uh, with um, Cloud DR has many advantages listed here. Much lower uh, TCO is a major one, you don't need to, have a, a large upfront investment instead only need to pay for the fully provisioned services at the time of recovery all right and we'll see that you know, when we do the demo and talk a bit about the architectures as well with cloud endure you can uh, be up and running literally in minutes again that that's what the demo is all about so we'll be able to see that you can see the other differences here, here as well for example from an ease of uh, user management perspective uh, you'll be able to see during the demo how easy it is to test and recover your workloads uh, in just uh, in just a few minutes, even if you have hundreds of servers uh, to recover. Okay, so some of the uh, key uh, take, uh, points here, uh, just to start off with, right? Some of the key terminologies and KPIs that we use within disaster recovery uh, uh, is with when we talk about business continuity and disaster recovery. Maybe very familiar to you, but to level set, uh, let's just look at uh, and, and talk about the recovery point objective uh, or RPO, right uh, here on the left, uh, and uh, RTO or recovery time objective here on the right. Uh, so these are both measures of time. They're measured in time. One in the case of RPO uh, uh, talks about how much time for how much time we, we I'm, I'm gonna have. You know, an actual downtime and I'm going to lose some data. Uh, so it's a data loss measure. Uh, and RTO is the downtime in terms of how much time before I can recover the, uh, my service and be up and running, right? So the, basically, those are the, t the two key 
uh, measures or KPIs that we're interested when uh, a disaster strikes and uh, and we need to recover our services. Right? Um, in terms of DR strategies, um, there are broadly four DR uh, strategies. First one is uh, backup and uh, restore, pilot light, warm standby, and hot standby. As shown in the diagram, each option has certain properties that you need to be aware of based on your business needs, the criticality of the service and other factors, you may select one, uh, one of these or, 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 or others. Uh, hot standby uh, here on the uh, extreme right uh, part uh, offers the highest availability because again, it's an active active type of uh, setup, but it's also the most uh, expensive option. Again, for certain workloads, this may be appropriate. Uh, and then on the other extreme, backup uh, and restore would be the, the one that uh, may take more time for you to recover, in both in RTO and RPO, uh, but may be uh, less expensive. Uh, in the case of uh, uh, cloud endured disaster recovery, we're talking about pilot light, right? This is what we're, we're, we're doing here. Um, and here we say tens of minutes, but really it can be just uh, uh, you know, single digit minutes as well. Uh, and we'll see how we can optimize that as well going forward, okay? Um, so let's look at a, a quick uh, animated uh, graph here that shows us the relationship between cost, cost and complexity on the y-axis and the length of service interruption on the x-axis, right? So this is a measure of time. This is a measure of really in, in dollars or some, some form of uh, cost, right? So the cost of business impact as you know, the downtime increases goes up, right? The recovery cost, the more time it takes to recover, the solution that you pick may be a, a less expensive. So it, you know, it just goes down over time. Now, if we say that you know, this is based on your organization, if you have a recovery time objective shown in the dotted red line and acceptable recovery costs shown with the uh, uh, dotted line, we can place uh, you know, the four uh, disaster recovery strategies on this graph, showing you know, the multi-site or active-active or uh, uh, setup, the warm standby, the pilot light, as well as the backup and restore here. Then you'll be able to uh, determine which are the options that would work best for your organization from a cost perspective and other uh, attributes, right? So, Again, this is a quick way of uh, showing how you'd be able to use something like this to make a determination as to what is the right approach for your disaster recovery. Um, there's a, a white paper on that showing the four uh, disaster recovery strategies that we can share with you as well uh, that you can look at, okay? All right, so <clears throat> in terms of business outcomes, uh, you know, organizations that protect the workloads with uh, disaster recovery into AWS, see these uh, particular outcomes, right? So the firstness is, is the robust, uh, robustness of, uh, in operations. So uh, you can gain a customer and, and uh, user trust. You can be relied upon to uh, run business as usual and, and use a secure proven approach, right? When, when it comes to uh, you know, ensuring that your service, whatever service that may be, uh, is uh, has the highest level of reliability and availability available. The second part is the operational efficiency, right? Um, so you can obtain substantial cost savings because, uh, again, we'll, we'll see this. Uh, you pay for what you use, and what you use on an ongoing basis is very minimal. It's just a pilot light uh, portion of it. The third part is that you know you have a peace of mind from a business continuity perspective, um, and one of the key aspects of uh, using uh, uh, cloud endured disaster recovery is that you can do non-disruptive uh, recovery tests, uh, and that's very easy to do uh, because something that a lot of our customers tell us when they come from um, you know traditional disaster recovery uh, uh, solution is that they don't test it, they don't test it, uh, or they don't test it often. So uh, the only time they test it is when a disaster uh, happens, and that's literally the worst time to, to do that. So uh, we'll take, I will take a, little, uh, a look at that as well. Um, in terms of benefits, you know, we have uh, you know, three different categories here in terms of flexibility, reliability, and the automation uh, part. Uh, but because we, with Cloud Indio, we're doing a, a, on the storage uh, side, continuous block level replication. 
um, and we use a highly automated machine conversion and orchestration uh, um, solutions. With the Cloud Endure disaster recovery, uh, you can leverage AWS to keep your data in sync. Uh, and all you have to do is just use a, a lightweight uh, uh, compute and storage infrastructure with an AWS uh, on an ongoing basis and uh, just an agent that sits on, on, on the server side, on the, uh, on the source side, okay? Um, as I said, you can, uh, you know, we operate using a uh, simple uh, uh, process no matter what the operating uh, system that you use is, you can do frequent testing. Again, something that we highly encourage you to do. And as pay as you go pricing, uh, similar to uh, other services that we have at AWS, there is no commitment. Uh, you use it for when you when you you pay for what you use and you use uh, only what you want. Right. Um, this slide can be summarized in a simple manner it's basically any source to aws right so it can be on premise to aws can be with you know from one region uh with an aws to another region or uh, from one availability zone to another availability zone with an aws or it can be uh, again any other cloud so it can be private cloud public cloud it doesn't matter right so um all all that is covered in in um in our use cases um, in terms of the life cycle that we use, um, and as we'll see in the demo, um, Cloud Endure is, is uh, very quick to deploy and it provides the same simple process for replication and recovery, regardless of the OS version or application that is using it. Um, you start by doing an assessment of your uh, um, environment for, uh, to, you know, to right size it and map it to AWS resources. Right, this is the starting point. Then you install a light, uh, lightweight agent uh, on the server. And again, we'll go through that so we'll be able to see uh, the, the whole process. Uh, a blueprint is what would define the parameters of the recovered server on AWS. Right? So you just say, this is how I want the recovered um, infrastructure to look like. So you, you set it up here um, and that's what we're gonna be using when uh, we leverage this. So. You, with that, you can do uh, some testing, right? Um, from a, a, a maintaining a, a, a disaster recovery readiness uh, perspective, uh, you can do an ongoing uh, monitoring, per periodic, test periodic testing and things like that. Again, this is more on, on the operational side, but again, because you are able to do that, you have visibility, you have the ability to do all these tests, uh, you have much better confidence and peace of mind that this will work uh, if and when a disaster strikes. Uh, and then of course, the important part, which is the recovery part. So if uh, when a, an event uh, happens, doing a failover and in, uh, quite, uh, as importantly, when the um, original issue on the source side is, is resolved, you can do a failback, right? Uh, so at the point we do a reverse replication uh, so that again, the, the DR site would have the, the latest data, right? So we want to reverse the replication so that again, the source site uh, has updated information so that it can be, um, you know, uh, uh, start from that point on and we don't have any data loss um, uh, that is involved with that, okay? Um, how uh, uh, Cloud Endure Disaster Recovery works, uh, quickly shown here. This diagram uh, again. Quite, uh, the main building blocks you have your source, okay, which could be a corporate data center, could be any cloud uh, co-location site. It doesn't matter. You have the AWS site, right? So you have a target region. We have twenty-five regions you can pick from. Which you'll see it in when we go to the demo. Uh, and then the third moving part is the cloud endure user console. We'll use that as well. Um, so. These are the three major uh, moving parts that we have. Uh, internally here within the, uh, the um, your corporate data center or whatever the source is, all you really need to do is install the agents and enable uh, some uh, ports on the firewall if, if you have some restrictions so that it can communicate with AWS. Same thing here with the, uh, um, with the Cloud Endure agent, okay? Uh, sorry, uh, with the uh, Cloud Endure user console. Um, the second part is 
is here on, on the AWS side. Uh, as we set things up, and this is our command and control uh, uh, part, the user console. As we set things up, uh, we'll, uh, the Cloud Endure uh, user console will go and provision certain things here. Uh, so the ones that are most important here are the staging area and the target segment, right? So the staging area is the part that is gonna be on all the time, okay? Uh, and this is where we have that continuous real-time replication at the block level that is happening from the source to, uh, to the staging area, okay? And this part, the targets, where was shown as target subnet here, this is the part that is enabled, provisioned, uh, you know, spun up when you do a failover, okay? Or you do a test uh, failover, right? So, um, so, uh, so it's, again, a quick dis dis distinction between these two is that this is basically uh, uh, spun up when we want to do a failover. So it's basically a, combina uh, a replica of this that is going to be here on the right-hand side. But this part is only doing the replication at the disk level. Right? So in this case, we have an example with uh, two servers that are uh, running, one is running an Oracle database, the other one is running a SQL uh, server uh, uh, database. Oops, sorry. Um, three disks with one, two, and the other one, as you can see here, you have three disks with the, uh, with the, that corresponds to the Oracle uh, database and two disks that corresponds to the SQL server here. Um, and then again, we, we do the same thing on the side, three and two, when we do a test one or when we do a failover. Okay. Um, from a support perspective, uh, it's basically, you know, the, the key term that you see here is any, 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 right? Uh, the important thing is x86. For anything that is running on uh, x86 architecture, uh, we basically can handle it, right? So any application, so, uh, you know, we have some business uh, enterprise type of uh, applications listed here that on the database side, any type of database, again, it's very agnostic to really what, what the upper layer applications are. Uh, from an operating system perspective, we have uh, two types of agents that we'll see later on, one for Windows platforms, one for uh, Linux uh, platforms, Linux-based platforms. Again, as you can see, various versions of Windows as well are going all the way back to 2003 as well. So very old versions are, can be handled as well. And from a source perspective, anything. So it can be virtualized using VMware or Hyper-V or KVM or, you know, doesn't matter. Uh, you can use OpenStack, could be, you know, uh, other cloud providers uh, or your own data center. So all of that is handled here, okay? Um, in terms of uh, some uh, customer um, uh, use cases, uh, we have, you know, many customers with, with a variety of use cases that have success, successfully implemented Cloud Endure Disaster Recovery into AWS. Uh, here's just one example with uh, Malibu Boats, which is the largest, world's largest manufacturer of um, high performance sports boats. Um, and again, we can look at that uh, as well. Something closer here to home this is a bank, Bank United, in here in South Florida. Uh, they actually had a talk at our Use a conference which is called uh, Reinvent um, uh, on on their usage of um, a Cloud Endure. So again, you you can uh, refer to this link and watch that video as well. I think it uh, can be um, enlightening as well. Um, so all the all the things that we talked about, some of the uh, additional resources that you can use, some demo videos, all of that is is shown here. Uh, so we'll share some of these resources with, with you so that you can have access to them and uh, be able to um, you know, consult them as needed. But of course, you know, uh, please leverage uh, a particular presence and through them uh, with us, we, we can help you with anything that any other questions or any other concerns that you may have with Cloud Endure and your usage within AWS, okay? So uh, I'm gonna take a quick pause here uh, before we get into the, uh, um, the demo, see if there is any question or anything like that that we can address now. I don't see any. Uh, Delta. Hi, Tamara, Delta here. Um, so 
one question that comes up is can can this support vmware deployments uh, for companies that are running vmware or is this only for um, bare metal type servers sure no good question no we do support uh, yeah, vmware um you know uh, vcenter based uh, deployments uh, uh, or actually any any version, you know, if, even if you have just a, a host that is running SXI, doesn't even have vCenter, you can you can use that as well. It's really agnostic to to all that. Let me just, oops, sorry. Uh, let me go back here. Yeah, so you can see here, you know, we, we do support a VMware um, um, a virtualization for sure, uh, you know, hypervisors. Uh, as well as Hyper-V or any other hypervisors that you can think of, even OpenStack, KVM, etc. So it's it's agnostic to that. Uh, actually, when it's uh, vCenter, it's even better because on the on the uh, failback part, we can even put um, uh, a small agent that will will do some orchestration of of the recovery of the failback back to the source, um, you know, cor corporate data center. Okay, so again something that we can refer you to uh, if that that is the type of uh, environment that the customer has you know all right thanks no problem um so, so if there are no other questions we'll quickly go into the demo because again we, we will cover quite a few things in there and i think it's it's always enlightening to see it in action uh, instead of just looking at slides and you know the beauty of it is we can do a lot of what I'm going to show you in, in 30 minutes or less. So, um, so in this case, I'm, I'm have I have a very simple uh, use case, right? So it's just a single server that is running on Linux uh, because I don't have a corporate data center. What I'm doing is I'm just using a, a different region within AWS. Uh, I installed uh, WordPress on that particular machine, uh, just the public IP address of, of that machine. Uh, you can even go to it. Um, it's it's live now. Um, and what I'm doing, and what I did is I installed the agent on this, and what it's doing is it's doing continuous replication to the staging instance that uh, that I'll show you in a minute as well. Right. Uh, so that that's what the agent is is doing on a continuous basis. It's doing this over uh, the internet at, at this point, right? Um, now you can use a VPN, a side-to-side -side VPN, and uh, do it across that. Uh, this is a sign for direct connect. This is, you know, may not, may be less applicable there, but this is if you have a direct connection, uh, a network connection between your network and AWS, so that it doesn't go through the open internet. Um, less common there, but um, this is an option as well. But even if you go through the open internet, like as we are doing right now. Everything that is sent uh, here across the wire is encrypted. It's running over a TLS uh, tunnel, right? So it's uh, uh, again, it, it's not, it's, um, it's always uh, secure uh, and uh, encrypted. So that again, anything that have that is sent from source to to to, to that particular uh, staging area is is going to be encrypted. Okay. So now let me pivot real quick and show you quickly how things work uh, on, from the Cloud Endure uh, uh, console, okay? So that, that's where we're gonna start. And uh, actually just to show you, I'm, I'm gonna sign out and sign in again so that you, you see the, you know, the process from start to finish, okay? So um, let me put my password, not the right one. Uh, and you can create uh, an account here. Uh, it really requires nothing uh, other than an AWS account. Signing up for this, meaning signing in for, um, um, you know, subscription for that. Again, with AWS, you only pay for what you use. So if you don't use anything, you don't pay for anything. So uh, it's it's safe to do that. Uh, but once you have this account, you'll be able to to get here. And usually where you start, and I'll do this with you, uh, so that again, you follow through the whole step end to end, uh, is to create a project. Uh, we, we can have multiple projects within our Cloud Endure uh, uh, console, where in this case, I have a couple of them, uh, CEDR, that's Cloud Endure Disaster Recovery Demo and Webinar. This is, this is the one we're gonna use, the webinar one. And this is the one we're in right now. Okay, that's what, the one we selected. But we, I can create a new one, right? 
So uh, test demo, I'm just gonna put it. We have two types of projects that we can create. One is for disaster recovery, and we can use Cloud Endure for doing migration as well. And this is what is showing you here at the top right corner. It says, uh, try new AWS migration service. Uh, AWS migration service or AMS is the new name for Cloud Endure uh, migration, right? So in this case, we wanna do disaster recovery uh, because the process is the same. It's just gonna do the replication in the case of migration, it's one way, right? So you're going in from source to the target. Once it's in sync, uh, what you want to do is, is leverage the, the new site and do that. But in this case, we're doing disaster recovery. It's showing me the license that I have. And the target, remember, it's always AWS. So it's going to select AWS. So with that, just those two, um, two or three selections, I have my new product. I'm in that new project here. You see in the top uh, left corner, test demo. And now, uh, as I start this, uh, it's, it's telling me product is not set up. So let me help you do it. Uh, and it's going to walk me through uh, a couple of steps that allows me to create this uh, um, uh, infrastructure, uh, this uh, project, uh, configure this project uh, as needed. OK, so the first thing it's going to tell me, because the license is done now, it's going to tell me you, you need some AWS credentials. Fair enough, right? Because we need uh, to be able to do certain actions within AWS. And for that, Cloud Endure itself will tell you, these are the permissions that I need. So if, when I clicked on it, this new window opened. And this is the policy uh, that we need that would allow us to do everything that Cloud Endure uh, disaster recovery needs to be done within AWS, within your AWS account, right? So if I were to Save this IAM policy.json file. It's, uh, it's in JSON format. Okay. I can save this. I can upload it to my uh, AWS account and create a user base that uses this policy uh, and make that user uh, able to access AWS through programmatic uh, uh, ways. Then you know the the you know IAM or uh, identity and access management within AWS will will create to, uh, uh, something for me, it will create an uh, access key and a secret access key, right? So those will be created. I just come and paste them here and oops, and paste this as well. All right, so as you do this, okay, uh, it will, um, you know, it will allow you to go forward. So for this, because again, I have some access keys and for obviously security is uh, job one, uh, I'm going to stop sharing for a second as I put those, okay? So just bear with me for a second as I go and, and get those um, credentials. All right, so this is the one. So I'm just gonna save and then I'm gonna start sharing again. Okay, let me share again. Uh, so yeah, okay, you didn't see it. Okay, uh, you see that you know the access key is shown here. Uh, the secret access key is not gonna show you again because you know for obvious reasons, for security reasons, it's only shown one. Uh, and when I entered those two and uh, press next, it, it was able to, uh, you know, use this to connect to my account and know my account number, uh, my account uh, identifier, et cetera, and do it this way. But the other thing it did is it said, okay, we're good on that. Now tell me about what the application settings should be like. Okay. So for that, remember it's source can be anything. Is that, uh, um, the target has to be AWS, all right? So source for us, we're gonna use other infrastructure. If it's, if it's not other infrastructure, it, it's all other AWS services, right? So AWS regions, I'm sorry. So imagine if you had, and this may not be your case, but if you have some infrastructure in Frankfurt, in you know, 
in Sao Paulo and Seoul or whatever, and you want to migrate it to, to the US or Canada or to Paris, whatever, you can do that as well here. So, um, uh, you know, this is, this is something you can do. In our case, we do other infrastructure and the target that we want to use, you know, whatever it may be, right? It could be Cape Town, South Africa, um, anyway. But in, in the case that we're using, we're using Northern Virginia, uh, US East. So that's, that's the one you select. As you select that, you, then it will ask you a few more questions. Say, okay, from a replication server perspective, remember the replication server is the um, machine that is always on that uh, is tasked with doing that replication on a, on a continuous basis from the source to the um, uh, to the staging area, right? So, so this machine uh, can be used for not just one server on the source side, for but you can do multiple servers handled by one replication server, um, or you can you know so the type of server that you can you can select or you can set as default so that it picks it for you. Um, you can use a dedicated replication server. Again, if you want to do a one-to-one -one mapping, you can do that. You can select the type of uh, disk uh, that you want to use. I'll show you real quick. You can do fast or slower. Um, again, depending on, on the use case, the workload, et cetera, you, you may pick one or the other. Um, so you can do some cost optimization as well. Yeah, you know, again, it has multiple knobs. You can select the subnet in which uh, the replication server uh, will be. So because we have, uh, you see here, you know, we have a list of subnets here. Why do we have these? Because I told it uh, which account we're in. So it will go in that account and say, what are the subnets that are available so that I can make it available uh, as an option to in this menu, right? So in our case, we're just going to do a default. Um, uh, the security group, security group is a firewall role that you can uh, attach to uh, a particular instance that would allow certain types of uh, uh, configuration to be set uh, or uh, certain ports to be uh, en um, uh, enabled or uh, allowed so that you can have communication across uh, you can use VPN or direct connect. So if I say disable public IP, it will be all done all across the VPN or the direct connect and get it this way. Um, again, a few other things you can uh, do a, a static endpoint, you can enable volume encryption. So when I, if I say I want to encrypt it, uh, it tells me what encryption key I want to use. And I have a few here. So, uh, you know, you can select the one you want. Um, you can put some tags again that would help you identify this thing. The last uh, couple of things is in terms of network bandwidth. Uh, we'll try to use as much bandwidth as you can possibly get, or you can say, no, you know what, I uh, I'm using the same pipe for other things, so I don't want you to use more than let's say, uh, just making it up here, like nine megabits per second for for instance. So we'll throttle it to and uh, to just use nine megabits per second. Uh, in this case, we, we, we don't do that. And then uh, for, for each um, uh, server that is do, uh, it's, um, uh, replicating to AWS, it's also gonna do some snapshotting. Uh, so the snapshot uh, policy is that it will snapshot every 10 minutes for, for every hour. Uh, and then every, every hour, I think, uh, for the past 24 hours uh, and daily for the past, for 30 days or for whatever we set it here, right? So in this case by default is 30 days. Um, so that you have that point in time snapshots available. So let's say I, I'm satisfied with this. I say, save this. Now it says setup is complete. Show me how I can go ahead and uh, onboard my servers, okay? so how to add machines. So machines are the servers that you have on the source side. So you have Linux machines, Windows machines, and the instructions for them. So um, this is the one we'll use, but I'll start with Windows real quick. For Windows, you have to download the agent and install it uh, and you know, port that, um, you know, the, the exe file to the source server, okay? And then run that installer. Um, you know, so if I download this here, 
you see it's uh, install underscore win dot exe uh, file that that is show that um, that is downloaded, uh, and I can run it here uh, on the Windows server, so, sorry, on the Windows machine, and at that point the agent will be installed. In the case of, of Linux, you you w get you know uh, to download uh, the the installer uh, Python script, and then you run that Python script giving it the um in both cases we give it the uh, uh installation token so this is a token that is specific to this particular project right within your particular account uh so that again it, this allows it the agent to register to this particular um project and not any other ones okay so that's that's how uh you would be able to do it okay so uh, for that, I'll quickly show you uh, how we'd be able to do it. And again, to just speed up the process, uh, what, what I have is I, uh, let, me, let me just pull this a little bit down uh, so I can see. Yeah, I have some sample solutions. So uh, one of the solutions that I have is a basic single instance a WordPress site. So if I launch that here, it's, it's going to allow me to uh, create this very quickly. This is using CloudFormation. CloudFormation is a service within AWS that we call uh, infrastructure as code. So within uh, within this, uh, it allows me to just go ahead and create uh, whatever I, I define in that script, in that template. Uh, and it will go ahead and create that for me based on whatever I put I put here, right? So in this case, you know, again, I didn't show you the, the actual uh, configuration of what, what is being set, but um, it's a very simple one. It's all, all it's going to do is just going to go and create uh, a, a server. And, you know, what we're going to do is just, we're going to SSH into that server, install the agent. So that, again, you see this thing end to end without any um, issues, okay? So <clears throat> I did something similar earlier on, and that's the one we're gonna use, just again, to speed up the process because the initial replication as, uh, as, we, uh, as we replicate the, the, the disk, you know, may take a bit of time. I think in this case, it takes about 10 minutes or so. So just to speed up that process, we're not gonna wait 10 minutes for it. We're, we're gonna uh, go ahead and uh, speed up uh, this um, as well. Okay, so. Let's wait for it uh, a little bit. Uh, in the meantime, sorry. In the meantime, if I yeah, I can close this one. Okay, go back here. Uh, all I really need is this. Um, downloading the the installer uh, Python script and run and run it. So I'll do that um, fairly soon here. So if I look here, yep the this instance is up as well. So I'm just going to SSH to it. Let me do this from here. SSH. Okay, here we are. So this is the server. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually just to show you how fast this thing is. Um, I'm, I'm going to do, sorry. I'm going to do this uh, pretty fast, but uh, I'm going to copy this, this script and download it onto this machine. All right. So this took, uh, yeah, less than a second. And because it's a small file, if I do, yeah, you see it's, uh, yeah, it's 7K, right? So it's a small file. So this is the script, then pretty simple. Uh, and what the, the part that takes about a minute and a half or so is, is this one. I'm, we're gonna time it as well, just so, so that you see that, again, it doesn't take much time to do it. It's, it's to do this. So again, if you have multiple servers, you can you know uh, potentially automate this uh, aspect of it as well so that you can go and uh, install these uh, successfully on, on each of those machines, 
Okay. So here, as the agent is run, as uh, you know, the script is running, this, it identified, you know, the the disk. This disk is uh, is the dev xvda. Uh, it's eight gigabyte in size, and um, and it says all all this for application were successfully identified. Um, it downloaded the cloud into agent. Now it's installing the agent. So you see the uh, the steps that that is undertaking. Uh, here, uh, so the sim a similar uh, aspect is you know similar steps are done with the Windows server, uh, Windows machine as well. Uh, it's just that you know again on on the Windows it's, it's slightly different. Okay. So here is adding the source machine to Cloud Indoor Agent. So if we look here, you see now it's added to the console. So automatically, because we have communication between the console and the agent, uh, it's able to detect that and the same uh, initiating data replication. And we'll see, we'll come back here, but let's go back here. Yeah, so this took a minute and 10 seconds to complete. Um, so that's how we're able to do this. I'm just gonna close this, I don't need it anymore. Uh, so, so it's resolving, uh, you know, so it's, it's gonna go through a few stages. I'm just gonna wait here for, uh, you know, a few seconds uh, so that you see that it's, it's gonna start, you know, doing the initial application and you'll be able to see. Um, and at that point, we're gonna pivot to the other product that I've created before so that we can, um, uh, you know, continue from that point on, okay? And uh, Tamara, you have some questions in the chat. Um, okay. Randolph asks, is the recovery process event-driven or manually driven? Yes, good uh, good question, Randolph. Uh, it can be either. Uh, so you can automate it so that, uh, you, and we have APIs that we provide that uh, allows you to do that. Uh, because the, the part that uh, Cloud Endure doesn't uh, do is, is to identify that an event has happened. All it does is does the replication, uh, but there needs to be a trigger based on, you know, uh, something uh, that that tells it that oh, the, there's an event that has happened that, and at that point we need to um, to start the the uh, the failover process. Okay, so it can be both. What, we, what I'm going to show you today is, is manual just because we're testing it, but it can, that can be automated as well. And Tamara, yeah. one other question that came in was, um, are there, essentially, are there any licenses? Do you need, license, how many licenses do you get initially? And how would you request more licenses if needed? So. Okay. Uh, so the, 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 um, the approach that we take with uh, with AWS, uh, and that's true for uh, all, all of our services, is that we don't have licenses. What you really, uh, if we look at the cost, because at the end of the day, that's maybe related to cost, uh, right? So the the costs of Cloud Endure is very simple. It's basically you pay per hour per machine that you protect. So in this case, I have one machine, so I'll pay for this machine. Uh, I, I, roughly, if you if you run it the whole time, twenty four seven, for a month, you pay roughly twenty one dollars for the for this machine. Then um, what you pay is for the storage of the staging area. Um, uh, so so in this case, I have eight gigabyte disk. So you 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 pay for that uh, for the snapshots that we take that are associated with that. Uh, uh, and then uh, the third component. Is is the recovery uh, uh, infrastructure right? So if this machine I want to recover with an AWS, at that point I have to spin up some new instances. In that case, I need to uh, create um, a new uh, um, you know a, a new instance, uh, have new disk and things like that. So if the failover lasts for uh, you know five hours, that event lasts for five hours. Uh, and after five hours, you don't use it. You pay for those five hours for using those services for uh, for using those uh, uh, services and that infrastructure. And from after that, you don't pay for anything. The last component, so the fourth one, would be the data transfer 
costs, right? So uh, whatever uh, data you transfer out, the data transfer in, you don't you don't pay for it, as, however much it is. So what we're doing now, we're doing replication from source to AWS. So whatever amount of data we use here, we don't pay. The reverse side, there's, that's a paid one, right? So again, we can summarize a bit of that, uh, you know, with Delta and share that with you so that you have an idea of how, how it is. But uh, the take, you know, the net net is that there is actually no license. The the only thing you pay for is the server, the agent, however many hours you you use it for. The second thing is storage for the staging area. Third part is the uh, recovered infrastructure. And the fourth part is data transfer out. Okay. That, that helps. Any other questions? Uh, let's see. Uh, no, those were all the questions in the chat. Thank you. That was helpful. Oh. No problem. Yeah, and uh, again, if if you need to dive deeper into any of these, we we'll, we can. But you know, just want to uh, direct your attention to this, right? So it's doing that application now, and it shows you how much it has been able to replicate, how much time it's gonna take it to complete that task, etc. Right? So about seven minutes left to to do this, uh, and it's replicating only the parts that have written data on, right? So if you have a disk, and let's just take an example, it's one terabyte in, in size, and you only have uh, one, one gig of data, we only replicate the one gig, the, the rest we don't replicate. Uh, we just actually inform, the agent informs uh, the console, okay, from this point to that point, it's all zeros, and we'll go ahead and write it at all zeros on the, on the, on the target set, okay? So, uh, uh, as this has, you know, is done now, I'm just gonna quickly, oh, actually, you know, it may, may complete fast. So we'll, we may be able to see it. Uh, so let's go back to instances. So this is Ireland, I'm using Ireland as my source. So imagine this is the source, okay? Uh, in this case, what, what I'm doing is that, uh, so this is the source that I set up earlier on, right? And this is the source I just set up like two minutes ago, five minutes ago, right? Uh, so this is where I installed a WordPress site, okay? So if I click on this and I show you this IP address and uh, just to show you, if I go to this, uh, the admin, oh, let me see. Yeah, so uh, let me see, it's a uh, WordPress, I think, right? Yeah, just trying to remember the, yeah, so here we go. So this, this is something that I posted uh, sometime, you know, uh, earlier this morning um, uh, on, on, on this particular site, right? So this is what it is. If I can add a new post, for instance, now, before we do any switchover, I'm gonna say, uh, hello to, let's see, okay. Let's take my second, Post. All right, so as this is written to disk, uh, this is um, copied seamlessly to the staging area. And the staging area is shown here. So what, remember, we have a replication server that is running all the time. There's a small server, T3 T T small, uh, that what it's doing is, is just replicating everything, every write we have on the disk is replicated to this one, right? So, so that's what we have. Uh, in this case, we have two because again, I, I created another instance uh, later on. And so if I look at this, this is the first one I created at 924 uh, AM here in Miami. And this is the one I created uh, about yeah, eight minutes ago, All right? So this is the one we're interested in, right? Uh, so it's, it's doing this. And uh, if I look at storage, for instance, you see the volumes, right? You see the one that we're using and then we have the one that we're replicating, right? So the second one is the replicated one that we're using for uh, replicating the source um, uh, the source machine, in this case, the WordPress site, okay? So we have that. Uh, so this is the source, this is the target, 
And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go uh, here. Uh, so yeah, show me the, the, new, the new posts here. If I refresh it, I'll, I should be able to see a third one. Yeah, hello too. Uh, what we wanna do is we're gonna uh, quickly pivot to CDR webinar, okay? And what we're gonna do is select this one. And instead of, we're gonna launch it, we can do it in test mode. And this is why I'm telling you it's easy to do that. Or we can do it in recovery mode. So we're gonna do recovery mode, even though it's, you know, we highly encourage you to do a test first. If you actually look at the dashboard now, it says one requires attention. One machine that requires attention. Because why? We didn't test it. If we test it, it would be in ready state. Okay, there's no lag, there is, it's been tested, so it's gonna be in ready state. Again, in the interest of time here, think of it as test mode is the same as recovery mode, except that we don't uh, uh, the, um, we don't stop the replication uh, from source to, to, to target if we do a test mode, okay? So I'm gonna do recovery mode. Oh, sorry, I didn't select the machine. So I'm gonna select this, do recovery mode, then say next, and it's gonna do the recovery. Remember, we have different snapshots based on you know a ten minute in intervals for the last hour. Uh, so we have those here. Um, so I'm gonna pick the latest one. Again, this is an interesting thing, and we'll see this in a minute. But the the snapshots are are interesting because if you have any corruptions, you know, uh, uh, malicious or you know uh, some errors that that you want to recover from, you can go back in time and pick that uh, point in time uh, recovery and, and use it now. Okay, I didn't talk about this, so I'm gonna cover this very quickly. I know we're almost out of time here. Recovery plans is if, imagine if you have dozens or hundreds of servers, we can, you, which you could have, you can prioritize them and say, I want these recovered first, and then this is the second batch, this is the third batch, etc. Okay, event log is again, log that shows you who has done what, when, right? And you can do it. The setup and info we did earlier on, right? So this is, you know, the credentials, replications. And so the important one here is job progress that we hadn't seen before. So now we can see here, we started the, this thing at 10.56.58, um, a bit late, sorry. I think I'm running a bit. Um, out of time here, but what, what we're doing here is, is, is we're letting it uh, uh, do a recovery. So if we go back now to the recovery um, site, which is Northern Virginia, and do um, uh, you know a refresh, we see that we, we have a, sec a second server that has been created here, okay? The second server is called a machine converter, right? Machine converter. Right? So this machine, what, what, what it will do is, as the name implies, will convert the, um, the disk that, that we were uh, uh, replicating to something native to AWS so that we can attach it to an instance with an AWS, okay? So this process will take a bit of time, uh, you know, a couple of minutes to do it. Dep this fully depends, that, you know, how much time it takes depends on the size of the disk that we're trying to do conversions on. So this is the part where you may want to uh, uh, play with and say, okay, what type of instance do I need? Do I need something beefier to speed up the process? And this is something that you can set um, in within uh, the Cloud Indoor console so that you say, instead of selecting a default, it will select something that uh, is bigger uh, and will allow you to speed up the process in, in that sense, okay? So the conversion is done now. Now we have the, uh, the new server uh, coming up, right? So it's, it's in stopping state right now uh, because we're attaching this, but you know, it will quickly turn into, it will, it will start and we'll be able to see it. So if we go back to um, the Cloud Endure page here, you see that, you know, again, it will tell you with timestamps what it's doing, started machine conversions, finished machine conversion. So this took about a minute and a half, something like that. Uh, so, and it says now job is finished, right? Finished creating a replica, for instance, this one, right? So, and it tells you started here at 10.56, 58. So let's say 57 and it, 
ended at 11, right? So, uh, so about three minutes for, for this particular uh, server to be converted. And if I go here and I do a quick reload, yeah, see now it, this machine is running. Uh, now, if I look at, um, at this, uh, I have this new IP address that I have. So if I go and open this and paste this and do WordPress. So this, the WordPress uh, instance is still coming up. So we'll, we'll, we'll see it, uh, even though the, the machine is up, some of the services may not be up yet. So just wait, uh, you know, for another minute or so for that. And so. Tamara, uh, quick question in terms of the security groups and so on for these servers that that was already predefined um, when he had set up the the default based the group. Yeah, okay. so you can, you can set uh, some uh, security groups and reference them here. So in our case, we just say default, which means that it will create a security group that allows port 80, port, uh, um, uh, you know, 443, uh, a, few, a few ports from anywhere to, to uh, you know, to be allowed. So that's why we're able to, for instance, get to the WordPress site without any problems. But yes, we can be restrictive and say, okay, I have a particular server, uh, service and only thing I need is UDP port this, you can create your own security group and only allow that port to be um, uh, to be open on that particular service. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, uh, so basically, that's what it is. So if I go back to machines now, uh, it shows me that, you know, the, the state is failed over. Uh, and, you know, that that process is, uh, is done here. So if I go here, yeah, again, uh, it's, you know, the replication here is not doing anything anymore because we have, we are in recovery mode. So we have this, uh, running because the machine conversion is done. It automatically will terminate this instance, which we don't need anymore. So it shows that it's terminated. You know, the second one you can ignore. This is the second project that we created just to, uh, show you the process. So. In this case, we're really not using it within this project, uh, right? So that's what we have. Uh, now, if I go here, let me see. Yeah, here we go. So now the this uh, the site is up. So yeah, the second post is on, and you know everything else should be on as well. Okay. So this is the demo site. Yeah, we have hello world first. This one and this one uh, done at uh, uh, just a few minutes, uh, you know, maybe a few seconds before we did the, the failover. Okay, so um, just to conclude, that's really what I had from a demo perspective, just went and looked at this whole process. I hope this was uh, useful for, uh, for you all. Uh, I don't know if you have any lasting questions. I know, uh, I apologize, we're about three minutes over time, um, but uh, more than happy to, I take additional questions if there are any. All right, and um, I think we, we'll, we'll open the um, floor if anybody has any questions, you could just do the raise hand and I will, I will acknowledge you. I know we answered some questions before, but uh, let's see if there are any questions. None yet, but okay. So, so I I'll just ask one quick question. So, um, in terms of setting up the agents, so for example, you know, if we have twenty servers that we need this the agent to be set up on, is there a easy way to deploy the agent on the different servers um, so that we can we can have them all all uh, configured to connect to Cloud Endure, or do we have to run the script on each server? Yeah, so yeah, the script really needs to be, uh, well, yes. So the, the answer to that is you can automate that part of it. Uh, uh, so either using either a, like a custom made script or some other uh, uh, tool that allows you to uh, centrally uh, deploy multiple agents to multiple uh, um, instances because as you can see and I'll, I can quickly show you here the the actual um, 
command that oh uh, let me let me share my screen again uh, the the commands that you use for installing uh, the agent are the same no matter which server you use right so um, if I go here set up uh, machines yeah I can add a machine uh, add a machine yeah so see the, what it's given me here be it for Windows or for Linux is the same. So there is no customization that needs to be done here. Uh, now, if you use uh, you know, Puppet Chef or uh, any other type of automation tool internally, you can leverage some of those to uh, push the agents to each of them. In, in the case of, of, uh, of Linux, it's simpler. In the case of uh, Windows, you have to download this uh, um, some other way and run this, this particular command. So yes, that can be automated, but you know, Cloud Endure itself doesn't do it for you. Uh, whatever automation tools that you use internally, uh, you can continue leveraging that. Um, because again, the customization for each machine is not there. Uh, you would just run the same command uh, and the, the same installer across all machines. Does that help, uh, Nathan? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, thanks, Tamar. That was a good answer. All right, cool. So we're basically out of time. So if there are no questions, I'm checking the chat. I think we already answered those questions before. Um, at this point, uh, we'd like to definitely uh, thank Tamara Yosef, Regional Solutions Architect from AWS, for this uh, wonderful uh, presentation. I, I hope it was really uh, helpful to everybody. And every time I see the presentation, I become more and more, uh, I'm convinced how wonderful uh, Cloud Endure is. And um, for anyone who is, you know, looking um, to, to actually deploy Cloud Endure in their environment or would like to have a chat, we are your AWS partner here in Jamaica and the Caribbean. And so we're available to meet to discuss the possibilities of Cloud Endure. And we, as Tamar said on the call, we partner very closely with AWS to, to deliver these solutions. So we look forward to, to meeting in touch. And thank you all for attending this webinar. And have a great day. All right. All right. Thank, bye -bye. Thanks, everyone, from my side as well. Uh, it was a pleasure uh, being here, Delton. Thanks for having me. And uh, you know, as Delton was saying, just to add uh, one, one more thing, you know, one thing we wanted to show the demo is that how easy it, how easy it is to use. And if you want to use it in your own environment, we're more than happy to help you through a particular presence, which has expertise in those areas as well. Okay, thanks everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, Tamara. All right, take care, guys. Bye.